Hey, what is going on everybody? Boylon here back for another video on Marvel Strike Force. Now, today's video, we're going to be doing a recap of what happened on the Battle World live stream that happened on earlier today at noon Pacific time. It was about an hour and a half. I took some major screenshots of things that uh, that they showed on the stream. Some things that we didn't entirely know necessarily from the data mines, but I will say that a lot of what was shown kind of just confirms a few things that that we did already know. So I'm going to be uh, going through each of the major screenshots, talking about what was in uh, the stream and any important details that are coming up. You may have seen also on the thumbnail that there is uh, some confirmation of what's going to be in the Battle World store, finally. So we're going to know what kind of stuff that we're going to be able to buy. So if you're ready to go, everybody, let's boil this down. So first things first is that they did primarily do their, their their major gameplay testing from zone five. We know that there is five different zones and there's going to be uh, different combat missions depending on which zone that you're in. And so they started doing some play testing of this one. As you can see on the screen here, uh, city or support is one of them. Villain and tech is one of them. The Herald mission for this one is hero and mystic with bonuses uh, for Night Stalkers, then you see the Elite Mission for Astral and Pegasus. This is on all of the zones, so they're all the same there. And then finally, there's a bonus mission of Asgardian. Now, we've already data mined that as well, that it's going to give bonuses to Odin. And they did actually test some of this, and um, some was easy, and, and this mission is really, really hard. Maybe that's why it's colored red. Even with Odin, it was actually uh, pretty hard. So they showed, this is the Astral Mission here. Now, they did do some playtesting both with Astral and with Pegasus. For Astral, it looked like to... And this is D5. They did it on difficulty 5. And if you zoom in... Oh, I can't really zoom in that far. But you can see on the right-hand side, there's basically like gear tier 19, 2, 3 diamond symbiote characters. And it was actually like a pretty much auto fest, I think. They probably could have played on auto with Astral and they would have cleared it, not problem. But then they tried it with uh, Pegasus and it wasn't really that easy. So this is the Astral team here that they went in with. Everything was more or less maxed out, 4.2 million. Now, one thing to point out, though, is, of course, that uh, you can mix and match the character. So this is going, P.S., Battle World is going live next Monday. It was confirmed. There was an event data mine. Uh, if you had been catching, uh, keeping up with my, my videos, that there was uh, something in the events that said Battle in Battle World. There were some points for that. So, uh, yes, there's confirmation that this is coming out on Monday. You can mix and match, you know, for these missions as long as it fulfills the requirements, you know, because Shadow King is not going to be out. Ancient One is supposed to be coming out next week, actually, but you're not going to have Emma Frost. So by and large, you're just going to have like these two. Maybe you'll have Ancient One later on in the week by the time it's Zone 5, and you could fill in with like Kestrel or Rescue. Uh, so they did a playtest with the full Astral team, and it was pretty easy. Uh, this is the Odin Asgard. This is the Asgardian mission with bonuses for Odin. And they played it without Odin, and it was it, it was dire. Like, they died very, very quickly. Uh, maybe you could... And this was with G19 characters, too. They got absolutely wrecked. Now, this is entirely designed for Odin uh, to get any meaningful progress. But even then, uh, you know, at least Pathfinder didn't make it to the end with this. And one thing that I thought was pretty funny... I don't know if I... Do I have the photo of it somewhere? Uh, da -da -da, that's, this was the... They tried it with this one, too, I think. And didn't really go that well. Where is... Do I have the image for that one? This one here. So I wanted to share this one with you. And what was interesting is that it had a 30 minute timer here. Now, I think this timer is uh, just for Odin to spend time soloing the entire mission. I don't know if it was just bad RNG or Pathfinder. Just, you know, it's a skill thing, right? And just didn't wasn't paying attention to, to who he was targeting. Uh, but basically, by about wave two, everyone was dead except for Odin. And then Odin was essentially soloing everybody until I think wave five and Odin eventually died. And so it's really interesting that this is the only mission, I think, that has a 30-minute timer. I found that a bit uh, crazy there. But anyways, uh, yeah, so really difficult mission. It, it's, it's not necessary to clear Zone 5, though. It's, quote-unquote, a bonus mission, right? There is VPs attached to it. However, you know, it's not going to be required in order to progress to Null Zone or Day 6, so keep that in mind as well. Uh, this was a little bit of a screen of Spec Ops in Zone 5 at Spec Ops 7. Now, I will say that the Spec Ops is entirely how we had a data mined. So everything that I had already shared with the required amount of characters, things like that, that is already known. 
So nothing that I saw when in when I was looking at this that really changed seems that that by and large that all the spec ops missions are the same. The characters required are all the same. This one you can hear is spec ops seven, which is pretty high up there. Requires gear tier 19 for a whole host of characters. Now tomorrow I'm going to have a video with me and Big Positive Geek, and we're going to be going over in more detail uh, with some infographics as well. We've been working on some new infographics for Battleworld relating to the combat missions and the spec op missions that is just easy for you guys to be able to see for you and your alliance. So look forward to that. Uh, that's going to be tomorrow morning. We're going to be talking about that video and sharing the infographics with you then. Uh, moving on, there was this was uh, this is actually the Asgardian... Uh, Odin mission here and you can see how many waves that he managed to clear he actually managed to go I think from like zone two or from wave two all the way to the end here at zone uh, wave five with just using Odin which I thought or maybe this was the final wave actually because I had Mephisto at the end here it was it was absolutely crazy Mephisto and his uh you know the costumed uh, legendary characters there and he ended up biting it but still th this was a lot of, and you can see the victory points 11,000 victory points and the battle world currency that you do get per node cleared as well so some good information there uh they also brought this up and this was some confirmation over uh the characters required for the combat missions there was a cup there was like two alterations from what was known in the data mine so that, i guess that's good to know that some things are, were subject to change uh they changed the herald mission on one or two of the zones but again a lot of this detail is going you can you can, you can pause this you can take a look at this you can write it down um, but it is going to be in my infographic, our infographics, sorry, tomorrow with Big Positive Geek. So if you want to see it in better detail in a more visual format, uh, then you can take a look at that. Um, the 90% of this is what was already known in my other videos from Battle World requirements and things like that. Uh, they didn't really change around too much except for like which mission was the Herald mission and uh, which combat mission they axed. Because there was actually one additional regular mission and they axed uh, one mission from every zone. So uh, you can pause that if you want to take a look at that. And we're going to be moving on to the Battle World store. So they did reveal this on the stream in terms of what character or what basically what's going to be available in the store. And I thought this was pretty interesting because now you can see for 15,000 Battle World currency, you can get five shards of Thanos Endgame, Gore, Hank Pym, Black Panther, Shuri, and Gladiator. But there is no Captain Britain. So Captain Britain is not going to be in the Battle World store. They did confirm that. Um, my guess is because Battle World is next week, right? They're just going to, that's what it's going to be, right? So all five of those characters are going to be farmable in the Battle World store. And my guess is they're not going to be anywhere else. This is kind of interesting, I think, because we know that these two teams are both required for the Shadow King if you want to get additional shards for them. So it's there's only going to be a couple of weeks, basically, between when Battle World launches next Monday and when the Shadow King trial is probably in about three weeks. So you might be able to collect like three weeks worth of battle world currency and then, you know, buy some shards for some select characters, but you're de you're definitely and absolutely probably not going to get seven star on all of these characters before the shadow King trial comes around. So do keep that in mind and maybe consider what characters you want to bring up the most. If you're going for like, say a six star uh, shadow King trial, maybe make sure that you get like your lowest shard character purchased first, that kind of thing. There was also uh, there's the gladiator there and they did some refreshes and this one here showing the cost of the purple crystals. So for 4,000 battle world currency, you can buy one crystal there. Honestly, I, I don't think it's worth it <laughs> unless you're target farming specific ones because, you know, it was to go back, it was 15,000 for five shards. So four crystals is the equivalent of five shards. Now, again, if you're super desperate for that, you know, for certain targeted ones, but otherwise we've been getting a lot of purple ISO rewards, I think in the event so far. And while this helps to target specific stats that you might be missing, I think that by and large, you're going to want to get your annihilators up to seven star as soon as possible. Uh, the next thing that we had was a picture. Again, we saw this in the preview video, but some confirmation around null the boss fight. And now uh, this was the 10 shards there. And what it seemed to suggest was that uh, there would be 10 shards. This is difficulty five. So 10 shards at difficulty five. It's, Pathfinder seemed to suggest that you would get null shards at all difficulties, but maybe less at lower difficulties below difficulty five. So I don't know. Take that with a grain of salt. Could be subject to change. I don't I wasn't sure if it was going to be 10 at all difficulties. Uh, we'll see next Monday, I guess, when we start launching with difficulty zero, because that's where it's going to start. And we're going to talk about that as well in a minute. 
This was a photo from the Null boss fight here using the Astral team, and they did very well. Uh, after one attack, they actually brought Null down. I'm pretty sure I have that image here down here too. They brought Null down to 90% on difficulty 5 with a full Astral team. So that's pretty big because that's like, say, for example, if 10 of you have a full Astral team and built, right, then on difficulty 5, you'll be able to kill Null. And I know that the full Astral team is not available right now, uh, but they did do some additional attacks as well, which was quite impressive, I think, too. In the stream, uh, they did this Odin Illuminati team. And this one, I think, did about uh, 3 or 4% on a difficulty 5 null. So it wasn't too bad, but you do get... Oh, yeah, sorry, I forgot to mention that there is three total attacks. I wasn't sure about this either. I wasn't sure if it was three attempts to do your best attack, but it does seem that you do get three attacks total to fight null which means that you have your top 15 characters that you're going to be using to battle null so clearly astral is going to be one of those three teams right it's just it's a no-brainer that's what's going to happen that's what it's designed to do that's what the team is meant for after that it might depend right like you might want to do odin illuminati but you know four, three to four percent that, that's okay damage uh the other thing is that uh they had where was this one this uh what they called them i called the mythic soup right and so this is going to be your odin your Super Scroll, your Apocalypse, and I forgot who else was included. And I think Shadow King was in there. I forgot who else was included in there. I, I would have used Old Man Logan, Odin, Apocalypse, Super Scroll. I forgot who their fifth member was. No. But, you know, anyways, this did a lot of damage. This was equivalent to, oh, I, I want to say it was about 5 or 6% at D5, which was quite substantial, right? If, if, if between Astral and this team, you know, you're able to put out 15% of Null's hit points at D5, that means it's not going to take your full alliance to do that. Now, I think that for those who are in the late game in D5, I think with 24 people, you know, let you know, less than what five, everyone has to contribute 5% total in three attacks. I think that's more than possible. So I, I think that right now, as Battle World sits, that it's very likely that, you know, Null is going to get downed as soon as we get to D5. For those alliances who are pushing like, Top end content like Orcus Raid D3, you know, clear DD7 and DD8, that kind of thing. So that is my expectations there. Oh, uh, we we've already seen that. This one's important. So Battle World is launching on Monday. However, you're not going to be able to jump difficulties right away. So basically, on Monday, all of us are going to be starting on D0 difficulty. And then from then for week two, you're going to be able to choose D1, D2, or D3. And it's my understanding that as long as everyone hits. 750,000 victory points on the first week. You can then go on to choose if you want to do D1, D2, or D3. So for me, week two, going to be going on to D3. And then we have to score 2.5 million victory points to get to week, th uh, sorry, to get to D4 on week four or week three. And then we have to wait two weeks in order to get into D5. I guess they're not unlocking it right away. So, you know, for those of us who are probably in the top 3%, top 10,000 kind of player range, we're probably going to be waiting a couple of weeks before the content is meaningful for us in terms of the challenge and difficulty. So do keep in mind, you know, screenshot this if you want to. This is going to be really important for, you know, the next couple of weeks in terms of uh, what difficulty we're going to be running. There is also this as well here that I want to share with you guys and just some explanation about Battle World a little bit more. So November 3rd, standard Battle World game mode rewards and no season. Actually, it should be November the 4th, I think, because that's Monday, which is when it's launching. Uh, but anyways, there's not going to be a season leaderboard attached to this. Then there's going to be a like preseason, essentially, the following week, and it's going to run for three weeks. And then December 1st is the first official season and runs for four weeks and then season two on December 29th. So, yeah, they're going to do like some sort of like preseason rewards, maybe on November the 10th, which is going to run for three weeks. That's what you need to know. And I think that was it. Oh, yeah. And there was also a gift code uh, for Battle World Symbiote Smash. I will type it out in the description and in the comments down below. Maybe I can do that. Actually, there you go. Symbiote Smash. Type that in and then you'll get that for your reward, which you just saw on the screen. So make sure you follow that. Make sure you claim that. Uh, and that's all the major information that this showed. And I think that's pretty much everything, honestly. And I would wait for tomorrow when we're going to go into deeper detail about the combat missions and the spec ops and what characters you, you need entirely. I've already spoke about most of this, 
but I'm going to put it in a more succinct fashion. Uh, also that comes along with some infographics that you can share along with your alliance. So, uh, that's it for now, everyone. Let me know what your thoughts are on battle world. Are you ready starting next Monday? Uh, let me know all that in the comments down below and until next time, stay safe and healthy and I'll see you all later. Boylan signing out.